Hello, today I'd like to show you how to do a little bit of reverse applique that's been fused. So we're doing it by machine and I've got this little tiny sample here that I thought I'd show you how to do one of these. Um, I've used my the leaf that I've got in the middle there is actually printed on the fabric, it's a batik fabric and I've cut away from the navy blue and stitch that on to the leaf fabric so that that's kind of the reverse we instead of applying it on top we're applying the background onto the the bit in the middle the design bit so first of all I'll show you quickly the piece of fabric that I took my leaf from so you can see this is a very delicious looking piece of fabric and I needed to find a piece of fabric where I could get enough of the background because I've used the background as part of it all the way around the leaf so that I could cut away um, the next fabric. So I had a little look through and I have cut out this piece of fabric here that's got a leaf that's got enough surround all the way around that we can do that with it and we just would ignore the rest of the leaves because they're not going to be needed. And now because I'm using a batik it's quite often hard to tell which is the right and the wrong side so I've actually popped a little pin, one of my friends, these pins, in the back of this fabric so that I can easily tell the difference. Now I'm because we're going to be fusing and I've got this is my square that I'm going to be fusing to so you can see I've got the leaf and the navy blue so here I've got my leaf and the navy blue so and I'm, and here I've got some fusible, paperback fusible webbing so I've just got a small square of that it's about a four inch square because I'm working on a small piece here and I've just finger pressed just lightly in both directions so that I know more or less where the center of my piece of paper is and I've got my leaf fabric here and now I'm going to lay that face down because when you use fusible webbing your designs are always going to be mirror imaged like round the other way so we need to start off with a shape that we're going to use back to front basically so on this fabric because it shows through so nicely I've got the right side down and I'm going to trace that leaf through onto the paper backed webbing um, that shape just approximately it doesn't have to be an absolutely exact tracing um, so, and I can see through my fusible web paper just enough to be able to do that. I'm not sure if you can, but I'll show you in just a minute. So I'm just going to trace that leaf shape. As I said, it doesn't have to be a work of art, this tracing, but it should be somewhere close because we're going to need to know where that leaf is going to sit. So if I hold that up a little bit, hopefully you can see that I've drawn a line around where that leaf is. And now I'm going to draw another line away from that, um, but within the area so that none of the other leaves show. So you can see on this piece that I've done, already done here, there's none of the other leaves showing. So I'm probably around about a quarter of an inch or so outside the leaf because that's what this leaf uh, fabric design is allowing me. So I'm just going to draw a second leaf shape now, just larger, just echoing that shape and making sure that none of the other leaves would fall in in that space that I'm creating outside the first shape. As I said this doesn't have to be an absolutely exact um, drawing but it helps to be you know reasonable. So, I've, so now I've got my two leaf shapes one inside the other and I'm going to be cutting away from this dark fabric that I've got here that larger size. So to do that, because I don't want to have um, the, few, the paperback fusible webbing all over the back of this piece, I'm going to just roughly cut out outside that line. Now I'm probably going to go about a quarter of an inch because that's what's going to sit behind the bit that's appliqued and I need to have enough on there to hold it in place. So I'll just roughly cut that. So this is just the same as ordinary applique except that you're appliquing the background onto the shape rather than appliquing the shape onto the background. And now I need to cut between these two lines. If I cut on my, this is actually, this larger size that I've drawn is actually going to be my cutting line with my fabric but I want to cut that line with the fabric so I'm going to cut between the two lines so that there's a little bit extra there that I've got to cut away when I've ironed it on and that's because when you iron it onto the fabric and cut it together with the fusible web you get a better cut it just makes a nicer edge and this inside leaf we actually don't need although you could always use it 
of course, because you've got a surround, you could iron it onto something else and cut a leaf out so that you're not wasting it. Right. So if I lay that on there, you can probably see what I've done now. So I've got a, a line that I'm actually going to cut as soon as I fuse this on and then just a, enough to hold that fabric um, after it's sewn. So I'm just going to position that where I want it. Now, as you can see here, I've more or less got the leaf going straight up and down, which is what I was hoping to do here. So it's not a straight leaf, but I kind of generally want it in that direction. So I'm going to iron that now onto there. So I'm onto the back of this fabric. If, if you've got a right and a wrong side, this gets ironed to the back, to the wrong side. And somewhere in the middle. Okay. So that's with that. So that was the glue side of the um, fusible web down, of course, and the paper side up. And now I need to cut out on that drawn line that I've done there. So I, I'm going to be just cutting away this shape that's inside here. Now, if you're wanting to save that shape for some reason, you just need to make sure that you cut carefully. Um, I'm not really too worried. So I'm going to just, if you've got some nice sharp scissors, it's always a good thing. So I'm cutting out on that line. There are some uh, places where reverse applique um, is done as part of a, a country's um, heritage, I guess, and design that they do. This is not particularly trying to mimic that, but certainly um, reverse applique has been around for a long time. Um, very often done by hand, but I'm a machine worker. So you can see now I've cut away my shape. So if I then place this now, remember my pin was on the wrong side, so I'm going to turn that over so that the pin's now on the back and my shape is there. And when I lay that down over that leaf, I should find that I've just got a nice little surround around the leaf. So now I'm going to iron that in place. So I'm going to lay on my ironing board, I'm going to lay down my leaf with the right side up. I'm going to peel away the paper from the fusible webbing. As you can see, that's leaving some glue on my fabric, which is exactly where I want it. And I'm going to now lay that over the top of my leaf so that the leaf is sitting nice and centered within that cut out shape. Now this is quite dark fabric, but I kind of just liked that contrast with that bright, bright green in the middle there. So hopefully you can see this okay. And I'm just going to iron that now in place. So you can see I've cut away the shape and I've ironed it onto this piece and that's sitting really nicely. So now I'm just going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch around it. I'm using, in this case, I'm using a, a blanket stitch. You could use a straight stitch or you could do it by hand of course but as I said I'm a machine sewer um, and I've actually got in there a decorative thread so I'll just quickly pull that spool off here and I've just got a uh, it's a rayon thread and it's a variegated so it kind of hopefully you can see this it kind of goes through from sort of green to brown to who knows what else is in there but I just thought it made quite a pretty decorative little stitch around on the applique as opposed to just a flat colour. So now normally when we're appliquing we're kind of starting over here and we're coming around this way but this time because we're stitching a little blanket stitch onto the background rather than onto the applique we need to start over this side and we're going to go around the other way. So I'm just going to start here and just start doing my little blanket stitch as I would normally do. Have your needle down if you've got one. And just keep turning it every stitch if you need to, to get around those little curves nicely. So you're stitching mostly onto the background fabric, your main fabric, with just that little straight stitch of the blanket stitch on the leaf fabric itself, on the, the bit that's in the middle. It's all back to front, really. I 
think some of these little variegated threads are very attractive and they just brighten something up that could perhaps have been quite dark. Now I'm just going to pull my threads through while I can reach them from where I started so that I can tie them in a little knot on the back so that they don't unravel. So if you do this at a point where you're away from where you started you can usually reach to do this. I like to do it as I go and then it's all tidy when I get to the end. Just leave about half an inch from your knot hanging so it doesn't just unravel. And then back on the stitching. It's so much fun to be had with fabric. There's lots of different things you can do like this, making use of a, a design already in a fabric. Um, very often when you see reverse applique done, it's not using a design in the middle. I just thought it was quite fun to do. Good way to have a go at something. Thread and I'm just going to pull that front thread through to the back again so that I can just tie a knot so that that secures it. And snip the threads maybe half an inch or so away, and there I've got my little leaf that lovely de decorative thread that goes around just kind of highlights it a little bit, I feel. So I thought that was quite an attractive way to do things. Um, but you could go on and do a little bit more than that. And I'll quickly show you what I mean by that. Um, I've already cut out um, to show you another leaf here. So I've got my leaf for in the middle. And then I've cut out my navy blue just the same and then I got really excited because I found some fabric much the same color as the leaf and I thought oh we'll put another round on how much fun is that and I thought oh that's pretty bright so we better tone it down again so one more layer and and it's going to finish at that so I'm going to press all those I can do them one at a time and just build that up so that these are all laid on. So the idea of the reverse applique is you've cut the shape starting in the middle and building outwards. And so that's one way of doing the reverse applique. One other thing I haven't shown you on, on here when I finish this, you can leave all this extra here, but now that it's all secured with your blanket stitch, you can actually just um, go around and trim that away. Don't trim it up too close and remember it is fused just a little bit in there as well. So just trim that away, like I have done on this one. That one's been trimmed already. So hopefully that will help you a little bit with the idea of some reverse applique, just for a change, a little bit of fun. And I'll just show you a sample of something I've made using the reverse applique technique. This was a, a wall hanging I made. It was uh, actually part of a swap, and I was parting company with mine, so I made two because I like to be reminded of what I've done. Um, so this has all been reverse applique. Um, as far as like this sort of rusty orange color is my main background fabric and I've cut away these funny shapes and then I've got another color in there and I've cut that away and I've got this other color in there. This one is actually several layers and all this. So I kind of just had a huge amount of fun. Some wonky triangles here that I cut away, then I cut away the next color and that yellow is showing through and all the way through I've done that. The only thing I've done different on this one when I made it I had already put my backing, batting and backing behind it before I did any of the stitching because I didn't want to come back and add quilting to it and I've actually stitched through. I'm not sure if you can see um, where I've stitched through but I've actually done all my applique, the blanket stitch, right the way through onto the backing and I've used a bit 
bit of a busy backing just in case things didn't look quite right so that it doesn't really show too much but it's what it's effectively done is quilt it at the same time so I didn't have to come back and add extra stitching which on this occasion I didn't want to do I wanted those sort of fabrics just to speak for themselves without all the extra stitching so that was just a little, little bit of a fused reverse applique for you and I hope you enjoy having a go thank you